Oh. That's bad. Yeah, hello. Eddie's here. Whiskey Wednesday. Hello, Eddie. Oh, Sorry hey, Eddie. to add you this late to the to the call, but I'm glad you you made it. Sorry for the mix up with your link. Oh, I see what the problem is. We that that you. intro music is pretty rocking. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry that, about that. Very nice. <laughs> Yes. Oh, let's let's drink some whiskey and talk some tech. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the people on YouTube, uh, welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. This is uh, a channel where we talk about uh, tech and coding, and uh, happen to drink a whiskey once in a while while doing so. So uh, I have no cups to drink though. Cheers to start with. Um, yes, I, I'm excited. Are you excited? Come Super on. excited! Oh, yeah. oh, oh, come on! <laughs> oh yeah, I'm excited. Okay, okay. Um, yes, I think um, I make a quick introduction to our guests, and then we uh, we do a little round of where every everyone can tell a little bit short background about their uh, coding journey, so we know uh, who is uh, on in in which path. So we're all a little bit from different backgrounds. So. Um, yeah, I think, um, well, let, let's start with our guests. Like Brad is, uh, is a software engineer in, uh, in Austin. He's working for Adobe and uh, he loves country music. He actually has a, has a show called Whiskey Wednesday about country music, yeah. which is exciting. Um, yeah, for sure. Mar yes, Martha is a self-taught um, developer while homeschooling four kids. Is that right? Do I have that right in mind? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing, Martha. Um, yeah, Eddie is a software developer, de developer based in the Netherlands, not too far from me. And um, Ruth is, um, she's a microbiologist and she's getting into software development. Yeah, I'm Mark and of course my wonderful uh, co-host, Scott Spence. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, so um, let's do a quick round where everyone tells a little bit about how they got into web development. Uh, like, how did you get started? Where are you currently at your journey at the beginning or more advanced? And what other background do you have than self-teaching? You have an academic background or not? And, um, and if you're already building or if you have already built something in real uh, for the real world with your self-taught skills that would be something nice to know as well um let's start in the same order i guess um brad tell us something yeah, so, uh, i'll give you the whole story i'll try to keep it quick so i do have an academic background i went to school at the university of texas at austin as an electrical engineer i took one programming course throughout that time. Then I got a job at Dell where I was doing firmware engineering, writing C code. Um, spent 10 years there and eventually transitioned into DevOps writing Python. But I decided that that wasn't for me and I really wanted to learn web development. So uh, at that point is where I really began my self-teaching. I started from scratch. Um, the very, very, very basics of what a browser is, how requests work and in the course of about two years, I taught myself and then landed a job at Adobe. Um, and actually, I got promoted yesterday. So it's been a good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I have built a couple side projects and I have launched a product with Adobe as well. So I built my own blog, bradgarapy.com. I built a website around country music, dailytexascountry.com. And uh, I also just released, like maybe two months ago with Adobe, product recommendations for the Magento e-commerce platform. And I built the whole admin UI experience for that. So at this point, I, I feel like I just ramped up really quickly on web development and um, got a lot under my belt at this point. 
Wow. That's a tough act to follow, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, who, who's next? Martha, tell us something about yourself. Okay. Um, well, I also went to college, but nothing computer related at all. Uh, <laughs> I started out as an astrophysics major and took a bunch of calculus. And then I said, why am I tormenting myself? And I switched to classical studies. So I studied Greek and Latin and history instead. Oh. Um, which is funny, I mentioned that because when I first started learning programming, it felt a lot like calculus and Greek combined. Uh, <laughs> so that was very handy that I had that mental discipline to learn those uh, in the first place. But um, I've been a stay at home mom for 10 years now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, it took me a while to realize this, but I was bored. Uh, <laughs> um, even though I was working really hard all the time and losing sleep and all this stuff, being a mom, my brain was bored. Um, so uh, I actually encouraged my husband to get into programming and he went to a boot camp uh, here in Atlanta. And then after he found his first job, I decided it was my turn to learn. Um, but I've been teaching myself just using online resources. Uh, learning publicly on LinkedIn has been a big thing um, because I need some kind of feedback from real developers, right? Mm -hmm. So I post demos of my projects and get peer reviews from just people on LinkedIn and such. Um, and that I started that last April. And recently I um, started doing some freelance work work um, and just did a React Native app for a client in the UK, actually. So many people from the UK are reaching out to me for some reason. <laughs> um, so this is kind of nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. So <laughs> Cool. Uh, thank you, Martha. Eddie? Can you tell right. us? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, before like I started coding, I did um, a bunch of like, uh, well, I did a few different colleges uh, first. Uh, so I studied accountancy and then I did primary school teaching for a while. But those things like, they were all right, but I didn't really enjoy them in the end and I didn't see them doing, uh, I didn't see myself doing them for the rest of my life. So I dropped out. That was like three years wasted, so uh well not entirely i i guess i learned a couple things but anyhow um so then i just uh practically threw away three years you know and then i asked uh, like then i just uh started thinking all right what do i want to do with the rest of my life uh where are my interests what do i what do i see myself doing and um i was always uh kind of a computer guy so uh, I asked some of my friends who I knew uh, uh, that I actually played a lot of uh, games with them. They were uh, American people, and uh, I knew some of them uh, were developers. So I just asked, uh, like, how do I get into this? What, what, what do I do? So uh, one of them just uh, said to me, uh, there's this uh, free book online. Uh, it was called uh, Learn Python the Hard Way. And I did that for like two weeks, and then I was it, it was clear to me that I wanted to do coding. So I just applied for a, a community college, is what it I guess it would translate to in the, the nether, uh, to the U.S. Uh, before I was doing like bachelor's for accountancy, but I was just I wanted to finish something. So, and I was pretty uh, depressed at that point uh, because, uh, well. After high school, I just, uh, you know, uh, wasted three years. So there's that. I just wasn't really in a good place. Uh, and then I started coding, and everything really went great. Like uh, the the college, uh, although I believe I learned like one percent in my classes of what I actually know, and the rest I did outside of my classes. Like I was doing all my assignments, doing all my tests, but I was like doing free code camp and projects and all this stuff outside of classes where really uh, things started to stick for me because what we did in the classes just wasn't enough for me. Uh, I needed a bit more practice. 
Uh, so I just worked harder, and uh, then after the first year, I got my uh, first internship, which was like six months. Uh, the first couple months of that, I had a lot of guidance because it wasn't really very busy at work, and then then things got busy. So I was basically doing the same work as my coworkers at that point, uh, but. The, like the first couple months were enough for them to teach me uh, what I really needed to know to do the job. Uh, and those six months went very well, actually. Uh, so th that was one and a half year into my degree. And then they offered me a job, um, which is kind of strange because I hadn't finished my degree yet. Um, so I s talked to my teacher uh, and said, like, OK, what do I do? I uh, like, is it? possible that I finish my degree, but also take take them up on this offer. So uh, what we ended up agreeing on was me working there four, day, four days per week for the rest of my degree, uh, which was uh, another year and a half. And then I did like my uh, assignments, my tests and stuff like that on one day uh, every week uh, where I went to school. Um, and that actually went pretty well. Uh, and right now, um, I uh, ended up leaving that job uh, after. Um, Eddie, I think your uh, sound's gone. Oh, no. That's it. Whose who's sound is, is about now? Hey, I can hear you. Yeah. Cool. Let's use a different microphone then. Um, so, uh, where was I? So, then I, um, at the end of that internship, uh, after getting my degree, I uh, ended up quitting because the job was all right for like the first job, but I learned pretty much all I could learn uh, there, and it was time for me to move on. Um, so I, d I don't recommend it, but I quit before finding another job, uh, which didn't turn out to be that bad because within two weeks, I found a different job that I am, where I am right now. Uh, and it's been great ever since. And, uh, it was also much better, but that's, uh, not very, uh, like I, I the, the most important thing for me was that I just kept learning, kept growing. Uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at right now after a year of work. So what is it you uh, you mainly do, Eddie, on like a day-to-day -day basis? Is it um, front-end, back-end, full-stack, um, so, DevOps? Uh, what I do is, uh, well, up until this point, I mostly did front-end. So like React, we have our own like uh, framework around React uh, specifically built for e-commerce. Um, cool. Uh, but right now, like the last couple months, I started venturing more into like backend with Node.js. So I'm going more towards the full stack graph because I just want to be able to like build entire projects uh, by myself and not just the front end part. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, Ruth, do you want to um, yeah. tell us? Sure. Tell us your um, your your beginnings. Okay, so um, hi everyone. I'm Ruth from Nigeria. Um, I started out with <laughs> a biology degree here in Nigeria. So um, I graduated last year, 2019, that was December. So um, thank you, thank you. So I've, I was never interested in computers. I was never interested in doing anything coding. I had friends that that were that they were coding back in school, they said coding back in school, but I wasn't interested at all. They were trying to persuade me, come learn how to code, but I wasn't interested. So this year I said, okay, um, for my 20th birthday, I said, I want to do something differently for myself. So I said, okay, since my friends have been trying to persuade me to come learn how to code, okay, I can give it a shot. So um, this year I was supposed to go for there's um, a one year service you do in here in Nigeria after your um, after graduating you serve your country for one year but due to the pandemic 
it's on pause. So I said, okay, great. This is um, a free time for me to learn how to code. So that was March. I started learning how to code and I wanted it to come from something um, I'm passionate about. So I, I studied microbiology in school. So um, microbiology about microorganisms and, you know, it's filled with data. There's a whole lot of managing of data. So I said, okay, I want to go into data science. So I did some background check and tried to see what to learn first. And I picked Python as my first programming language, which was, I, I'm happy I stayed with Python because it was very beginner friendly. Yeah, I said um, data camp. So when I started, it was free to some points, but you have to subscribe to gain more access. So I dropped it. I looked for another free one. So I kept hopping, looking for the free ones to, to you know, get knowledge from. So I moved on to using data quests. So generally, at that first point, it was very interesting because I could, I was seeing that I was doing so many cool things. I'll just type in a few commands and it will tell the computer what to do. And it sparked up my interest. I said, okay, cool. I, I, I can go ahead with this. So then I found out the tech community in Twitter, which is a major part of my growth. Even if I'm just beginning, the tech community in Twitter is very supportive. They have been a great support to me when um, I needed answers to some certain things. So. From the tech community in Twitter, I got access to free courses. I got access to free data, free internet to continue learning. And it was, it was so great. I was, I was surprised how someone that doesn't know you from anywhere would want to do such things for you. So for the people listening, I, if you're just starting out or you're you want to learn how to code the tech community is very supportive i can say that this is just three months here and i'm doing amazingly great so the tech community is very supportive so um for three months now i've been on okay the first month i started with python then when i was on twitter I follow a lot of web developers, so I was kind of distracted, trust me. You know, with everyone posting what they do with HTML and CSS, it was looking so beautiful, so attractive. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm learning Python. I can't do this with Python. And You're I was seduced. like, oh. <laughs> it's I was like, the front end. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to use the month of May to explore web development. So I went on ProGate, I got access. Um, true Hack Sultan, um, the founder of Dev Careers on Twitter, I got access. So I went to ProGate and I said, learn HTML and CSS. Trust me, it was amazing. I was I, I was making web pages that were looking so beautiful and I was, <laughs> I was showing it to the world and everybody was giving me thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, you're doing well. But when I was doing that with Python, nobody was giving me those thumbs up because it wasn't looking so beautiful. And at a point I had to, I had to come back. I had to say, okay, this is what I want. No matter how well web development looks so attractive, I, I want to go ahead with Python. So I said, okay, May was going to be the end of my exploring web development. So I now I'm back to Python and I'm learning quite good. And uh, I currently have a mentor. I'm on a mentoring program. So I, I get to, um, the, there is this, there's a schedule of how you learn. So mentoring is actually good in tech so you not move out of track sometimes so some of what i can say is tech has been interesting for me and i wish to continue and continue and continue yeah so cool yeah. Awesome. It's so funny your story about how the websites look so beautiful you know and <laughs> yeah. i mean in a certain and says, even though I've been doing front end web development, I feel kind of the same way because I am not very fancy when it comes to design and CSS and such. But, but like, yeah. when I actually look at my code and they compliment my code, like, your code is actually really good. Or I have, yeah, one person even said, You have beautiful code. I'm like, oh, That's what I feel so much better. Yeah, yeah, I okay, can't. 
Uh, do you want to tell us uh, about how you got started and uh, where you are now? Me? Uh, Martha, Me? sorry. Okay. Oh, didn't I already go? Yeah, she already... I already went. went. Oh, wow, okay. I mean, it's I don't know, I'm sorry, but I didn't want to go too long, you know? <laughs> Let's get a checklist. Let's get a checklist. <laughs> yeah, wow. You want to go, okay. Scott? A quick background? A uh, quick background for me. Wow. Okay. Um, so uh, I was like a, a career sort of business analyst who did stuff with uh, VBA um, for like, large financial organizations. I was at a bank called Barclays for about 10 years. Um, but um, that was all moving towards like data science sort of stuff. And um, I think this is just going to hint on what Ruth was saying. It's... Um, I, I like the, the pretty stuff. I like it when you do stuff on the screen and people go, ooh. So, um, and uh, at, the, at the time, this is about 2016, a lot of stuff, like the whole Microsoft Office suite is now in in the browser. And uh, I think I saw uh, the Medium article from Quincy Larson. Um, and there's a quote, I don't know, I think it's from DHH about, um, you know, if, if, any, if any program is can be in the browser will end up in the browser eventually so uh, that's what just made me decide to i, I was looking at uh python um but like actually the web you know uh, like the visual side i think it's django and flask for like building websites that was all super confusing some really rigid sort of uh folder structure to to uh, like get all your uh, all your assets aligned and stuff and it was it was uh, it wasn't for me, um, and then I think around that time is when I sort of uh, come across this post from Quincy Larson. I was like, right, okay, JavaScript, do it, do it all the way. So, um, so yeah, I mean, um, uh, I, I've always sort of liked messing about with computers and stuff. So um, it, it, it was good to sort of get that initial um, sort of in um, as like a, a business analyst, but. Um, uh, it, it wasn't anywhere near as fun as the, the sort of projects I'm working on now. So, so yeah, I mean, and uh, for, for me, for, for starting out, it was uh, very much Twitter is um, web dev. Twitter's the best, um, such a great community. So many good resources on there, uh, very supportive community. And, um, you know, um, there's, there's just loads of stuff on there. And um, that was like the majority of where all my, uh, anything tech related comes from for me um so pretty much learned that way free code camp of course um did free code camp started their curriculum uh around uh 20 god it must be in 2017 because I, I started full-time in 2018 so um started that um i only just finished my, my front-end certification a couple of weeks ago because uh, i've actually just just gone back to uh, the material and started doing it again um, but because um, at, at that time um, I thought I better just start building projects and I come across something called Chingu which is you get put into a project with four to five other people and you're all distributed um, so we all learnt, um we all just put a project together so at that time I got a really good understanding of working in the team how to use Git, GitHub effectively and um, I thought well, at that point, I was like, right, okay, I need to start looking for jobs. Um, and, and luckily enough, um, I, I found one quite quickly with a place called uh, Zazi. They're a, um, a government contractor dealing uh, digital transformation. So uh, thank you, Anka, uh, not Anka, sorry, Anga and Sergio for giving me my break. Thank you. Um, but I, I, didn't, I didn't stay there long because um, the project we were working on, it was all Angular. And uh, it was Angular JS. What's what's the TypeScript one called? I don't know. This is the thing. I felt really confused about Angular. It's about six different versions, which um, it, it's not great if you want to start if, if you want to find learning resources. Um, to, that was that was confusing. And um, I'd already built up sort of a good base in React, so I was looking around for a job for that. And that's why I started where I am at the moment, which is Karmarama. It's an ad agency here in the UK. Uh, we do quite a lot of um, uh, like TV adverts, and I work for like the uh, the digital product side where we, we do like their apps and in interactive sort of uh, experiences for them as well. So uh, primarily, I do front end there, 
Um, I'm, my role is web developer. So I, I, I develop web. Um, but I mean, what's the title? What is the title? I mean, uh, I think, you know, I, I could say I'm full stack, uh, I could say I'm front end. Uh, I do DevOps as well. So <laughs> you know, it's, um, I, I do a lot of stuff there. So um, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting stuff to do. But um, uh, I think what we'll leave for another episode is my sort of my, my true love at the moment is uh, Gatsby and working with the Jamstack. But um, that's for another episode. So uh, we'll, we'll move on from that for now. But yeah, that's 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 my story. Um, yeah. So yeah. I hear I hear you about the Twitter thing. Like I just recently got started being more active on Twitter. Um, I was on LinkedIn a lot since the beginning. You know, um, mm. and eventually, like I was, they've been. I was a LinkedIn top voice for web development last year. Like that's how active I was cool. on LinkedIn. Cool. But you know what? I, I mean, I got a lot of job leads, but the thing is recruiters and HR people or whoever's in, actually in charge of hiring don't know what to do with self-taught developers necessarily, you know? But the yeah. actual engineers, actual experienced developers understand that every developer is really self-taught, you know, uh, yeah. and that's a very valuable skill. So I was getting all these real engineers saying, oh, you should apply to our company. But then they hand me over to the recruiter or the HR person and then just, and like, what to do, yeah. I just disappear, you know. But yeah. like just in the last couple of months, I've been active on Twitter and that really is where the action's at. That's where most of the development community is, I think. Um, and yeah. it's been amazing, so. <laughs> I can yeah. say like one of the difficult things that I had to go through when transitioning from like a, like a DevOps type Python engineer over to web development was prove that I could do it with no actual track record. And so there's two ways that I tried to do that. Uh, number one is build side projects like actual side projects and put them on the web. You can share a URL yep. with anybody totally and it'll, right. whether it's an HR person, whether it's an engineer, immediately you can, you know, show your skills. And then second is just like learn in public, be vocal, speak on Twitter. It, like so many opportunities have come out of Twitter for me that those two things in conjunction are like super powerful to just yep. show that you can do what you say you do. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I think um, it's important. Go yeah. ahead. Eddie. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, just uh, to uh, expand upon that uh, a bit, like uh, side projects have been like super important for me uh, because as a, like uh, when I was still starting, uh, I had no way to like uh, prove if I was any good at what I did, right? So uh, I made a bunch of projects and then I got uh, that an internship that went pretty well. What I uh, that I told earlier about, but it also helped me with uh, like that job search after that. And uh, hold on, uh, sorry, it was someone asked me <laughs> asked me something. Uh, so side projects super important, and uh, Twitter and stuff like that. It's it's also uh, like it's it's not at least. To me, it wasn't vital at first, but I can see like it. If you haven't done an in internship like I have, it can probably be very important for your uh, job search and like connecting with people, uh, because that's really what an internship is, right? Just uh, getting some connections, getting a little bit of experience, but uh, mostly like the connections to people. And um, besides, uh, like those things I would uh, like to add that going to meetups is also a great way to like build your network and it's also just really fun. So, uh, yeah. 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 And that's I'd love to add something too about learning in public. So I recently finished the 100 days of code challenge. That's one challenge too that's really, really helpful. Like it helps you stay consistent. If you're, if you're good with learning in public, you can try on the 100 days of code challenge. And it wasn't necessarily code every day, but do something about code. It can be reading an article. Like you can just define how you want the 100 days to look like. It can be reading an article, um, 
tweeting about someone's article also so 100 days of code challenge is another way to stay consistent and learn in public too then he talked about eddie talked about meetups meetups are very essential like you get to network you get to expand your reach sometimes when i see meetups i don't even care if it's within if it's not in nigeria thanks to the coronavirus many meetups now are virtual so <laughs> i i usually hop on those meetups and get to know more people they always have a networking session where you can have like two minutes chat with someone that's somewhere else in the world so those meetups have been another helpful thing to me yeah yeah just another thing on the 100 days of code that is uh that's been great uh, absolutely great sort of um uh, resource for me that's what um sort of reinforced my sort of daily coding habit um still do it now i still get up at ridiculous o'clock in the morning i don't recommend it for anyone um you know i, I, I look really old i'm only like 23 uh, <laughs> but um uh yeah that i mean that really helped me uh, it really helped sort of reinforce the learning um, especially for um, someone of you know um, like me, where it you know you sort of learn to grok a pattern or how things are, but it's just like just doing it repeatedly, and um, you know it, it just becomes second nature after a while. But um, that's um, that's one thing I'd recommend to anyone if you can do it. Uh, don't feel pressured to have to do something every day. It's just something to help get you into that sort of mindset of just sitting down writing a bit of code and then um you know b building the habit from that i think yeah. that one of the hardest things about teaching yourself um is the that discipline yeah. well well and lack of the social aspect you know i mean when you it's a lot easier to do things when everyone around you is doing it right i mean that goes for good right. things and bad things right um so it's important if you want to learn development that you surround yourself with other people who are doing the same thing. Um, so that's the important thing about like, that's why boot camps can be very helpful. Uh, like my husband's tried to teach himself and he just, he's like, nope, I'm not going to do it. You know? <laughs> so he needed to go to a boot camp, and a lot of people that I've met have gone that route. They've tried teaching themselves and they eventually go to a boot camp. Which is great because by tr starting out trying to teach themselves, they knew that they were actually interested in it and they'd had a taste of it. And so they weren't just going into the boot camp and going into debt and all this stuff totally blind yeah. as to what they're getting into, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that social aspect is so helpful. So, Twitter, LinkedIn, meetups, um, learning publicly, the accountability, like if people are expecting to hear from you, that is motivation as well. Um, I built a lot of projects and part of my motivation was I knew when I finished a project, I was gonna do a video demo and post it. And so I found myself like imagining, what am I gonna say about this project, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it was a huge motivator. So yeah, finding other people somehow, even if you're just learning by yourself at home, is so vital to yeah. keep the motivation. Yeah, I totally when agree. Um, like you need to have, as you say, someone around you, like it could be like in, in a boot camp where you are like a group of people doing something or you go, as you also mentioned on Twitter, which I think is incredibly, I think it's the best resource for sharing stuff that I, I found. Like there's nothing like you can share things on other platforms, but on Twitter, the community is so huge it's uh they are all so supportive like all minus one percent <laughs> and um yeah i i think it's important when you learn something to uh as you said publish it somewhere and just show it like people yeah. don't really care if it's not perfect people don't care if it's not uh, the best thing in the world but they're like hey this is such a cool idea or even someone says hey i'm gonna i'm gonna make a pull request so you can um or i can help you with that or i can add on to your software even though it's not perfect like nobody really cares 
all that much if your coding is perfect. And I think that's like a big lesson I learned on tech Twitter that um, either way, it's fine. Like you are doing something so more than most of people. So it's already fine. And when it's when it's also perfect code, like yeah, it would be great. It would be awesome, but it's not necessary. Like you can do great things that are not uh, like perfectly coded. I think yeah, even yeah. In, yeah, even in companies, in big companies like Facebook, Amazon, I, I don't think they have all perfect code. I, I imagine it's all full of workarounds and uh, and hacks and and what. Whatever. Yeah, but, you I, know, mean, I, I, could, I could tell you horror stories about um, <laughs> large, large financial <laughs> corporates um, about how the back end works and stuff. So, yeah, it, yeah, it's you know, really only the developers who care about clean code. the The business side doesn't care. They just want a oh, product. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. No. and you know, like the, this client I had, he just wanted an MVP that he could start showing to customers and try <laughs> to generate interest and such and there were there were still bugs you know <laughs> but it was it was good enough to get out there and start showing people so um yeah. <clears throat> the, the bad thing is when they don't uh give you time afterwards to make it uh well so if you, <laughs> you if you're doing an mvp you are like cu like uh, cutting it short on so many ends and if it stays like that it's going to be a disaster, not today, not in a month, but in a year, in a couple of years. It's all coming down. It's, it's like developer karma. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, just to clarify, I'm not sure if it was mentioned before, but uh, like uh, MVP, minimum viable product, a.k.a. prototype. And yeah. it's not uncommon for companies to do those at all. Like. Uh, I'm sure like, uh, I, I don't work at Facebook, so I can't really comment on it, but like, I'm sure that like version one of hooks that they may have used internally wasn't like what they eventually even released on open source as like a beta or whatever, you know, it's just an idea, get it out there. But as, uh, others have mentioned already, it becomes a problem when you don't get to go back and fix your stuff because the business doesn't care, uh, like Martha said. Unless, you know, uh, in the end, all right, uh, here's your project. Uh, it's it's the MVP, but it wasn't perfect. But, uh, you know, the client likes it. And then they ask you to add a, add a feature. And then you have to explain why it takes 36 weeks to add, like, another button to the right of, uh, you know, just something silly like that. <laughs> I can uh, confirm, like, even at Adobe, we... Uh, ran MVP style for product recommendations, the big feature that we launched. And it was messy, right? And it was fast. And we were delivering to customers very, very, very early. We were bringing people in as like early testers because they chose to work with us. And the, the code we were delivering had bugs and customers were finding them. But that was part of the process. We were saying, hey, you have a chance to shape where this is going to go. And by the time we got to 1.0, it was still pretty MVP-ish, but once we <laughs> launched, we we were able to kind of step back, take a breather, and and then we only had kind of two priorities. It was fix incoming customer issues and you know guide customers um, onboarding, and also just like go clean up and write tests and do what we need to do to kind of shore up the product. And then yeah. we started handling the, the feature requests after that. And that's what it was like, like posting my demo, project demos on LinkedIn. Like I was so nervous to post it because I knew, I mean, I had links to the live demo and links to my GitHub so people could see the code and everything and try it out themselves. I was so nervous because I knew they were going to find bugs. I knew that I did not get everything, you know, but I also knew that that's exactly what I wanted. You know, yeah. as as bad as it felt, as embarrassing as it was, that's what I wanted because I wanted to improve as a developer. I wanted to learn, so I needed that feedback. Um, and usually, people would post in the comments like, "Oh, do you know that this is happening?" Or, "Hmm, this isn't working for me," or "It doesn't look good on mobile in this area." And I'd go in right away and see if I could fix it. Um, and that was really invaluable to learning. So. Yeah, yeah so a, a, I want uh, to add something. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Ruth. 
Okay, so um, there's there's something uh, on the show one when I hopped on that the guest talked about practice as twice as much as you learn. So um, I want to like talk about that because even as you're starting out, you might you might think there's no project for me. I, I can't think of a project to start on. I can't I can't think of something to do. But it can be as little as five lines of code. Every everyone can think of something an idea. You can try to tweak up. Um, what you're learning, or well, maybe if they build uh, a dog, you build a cat. So you can just think of something very little to start with. And like like uh, Martha said, you put it out there for people to comment on, to make comments. Like I remember um, three days ago, I did uh, like a flirting game with Python just to return like a little game. I tweaked the rock i am scissors game i tweaked it up to a flirting game so i posted the code on twitter and some persons were telling me okay this is how you do it for these five lines you necessarily don't have to write up to five lines of code you can just use two lines to do this thing and i was learning better there so it's it's yeah. good that as you learn you practice twice so you, you you become a better developer there because at every point i put my code out there I got comments that made me understand that I can do it in a shorter way than doing it this way. So yeah, it's good to practice and hop on projects. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a good quote yeah. from uh, yeah. Sean Wang uh, yeah. about learning online. He says, you can, you can learn an awful lot for the small price of your ego, which I think <laughs> just means uh, which just means what uh, Martha and Ruth are talking about. It's just, just you know, get, your, get your stuff out there and people will help you people will say you know you're not going to get taught you know uh cancelled because you put out something which doesn't work uh people want to help i mean it's you know it's um they're not going to sort of uh what's the word for it crucify you for putting out something which you know um which which isn't fully functioning it's just you learning and saying look this is what i've done and even even at that point uh people other people still learn from your experiences as well so it's it, it's always a good thing to do um and uh, you know it's just about being humble humble and uh you know just just getting it out there i guess so yeah it's um it's good yeah, yeah. Even if people are not like learning from what what you program they might get inspired to do something with it yeah. so uh, yeah, exactly. really important Ruth? So should we introduce, we introduce ourselves, should we introduce our drinks too? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so, so last week, I usually just drink wine if I drink anything, but I decided to grab a bottle of bourbon to celebrate my successful freelance app. Uh, so I just grabbed a- Congratulations. Woo! Congrats. Thank you. Nice. And I mixed a little, uh, I guess it's a maple bourbon smash is what it's called. It's got okay. orange juice and maple syrup and water, and it's it's actually pretty good. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, I am drinking a uh, Lagavulin. I don't know how to pronounce it, no. but it's it's a it's a whiskey. Uh, it's way yeah. too bright. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's it's not like it's not like. Uh, uh, anything mixed so it's it's just boring out of the bottle but it's nice it's definitely not boring i <laughs> like a woolen is not boring it's a 16 oh, year yeah. edition i i suppose yeah yeah it is wow. it's, it's, yes. it's, it's great yes so this is good to I, learn about actual whiskey as well i guess yeah this of quite... course <laughs> like this is all <laughs> entertainment <laughs> so i'm having um glen 18 years this is nice. also wow. a classic um, usually I drink it neat, um, but since today it's hot outside, I have a glass with uh, with ice on it. So uh, that's what I'm drinking today. So after after the first whiskey Wednesday, I've, I've not drank whiskey straight again because um, obviously you saw from me asking Martha if she's spoken yet. <laughs> uh, it's not <laughs> uh, it's not that great to be drinking it that much of it um but i got this glen cliche glen cliche yeah glen kinchy uh which me and my friend discovered before lockdown um and uh it's really nice and um but i'm only having one 
because um, it's it's nice to drink, but um, that's uh, I think it's just uh, that'll be one for the next show as well. So so uh, next up, I've got a, uh, <laughs> a Whitstable Bay beer to uh, to enjoy, nice and cold, because um, like you said, it's 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 hot here too in the UK. It's uh, coming up to well, I think it's just gone past thirty degrees now, about twenty nine. So yeah, twenty nine degrees. But um, that is um, twelve year old Scotch, and um, I don't know what the aging thing means. Does that mean the the older? Does it the older it make, does the longer it's been aged for? It means it's better or in the barrel? I, 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 yeah, I think. Yeah, the, the age expert. number is like. How, I'm, I'm looking how, at Mark. How, He's my my yeah. whiskey guru. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a guru. I'm far from that. But uh, yeah, 18 years is uh, how long it it was in a barrel, and um, yeah, and it it doesn't mean it's better. There are whiskies that are like older but not better. Yeah. Um, it's it's personal taste most of all. Like yeah, it's like you can have like a 10 year old that you super like, and you get another 21 year old that is like. 10 times the price of your 10 year old or even more. And, um, and you don't like it. It's yeah. yeah. Age, age isn't, um, equality. Just, so just I've, yeah. I've so always it. thought of it as just this one specific burn your throat, horrible sort of tasting thing. And, um, after, I mean, cause I went to, um, like here in the UK, we've got a place where you just go out and you taste loads of different wines and at the end of it you had like a whiskey bit as well and then they got out these all these different whiskies uh like a shot of each or like a tiny little dram of each and uh, they were saying this one is like you know 18 years this one's this amount and i, I tried each of them and they all just tasted exactly the same <laughs> horrible and they just burnt my throat and i was like this is just this, this disgusting who, who wants to drink this stuff <laughs> Um, so Scott, so, you might like yeah. you might like what I have then because I I'm a fan of like very sweet whiskeys. Um, yeah, I like this one called Southern Comfort. I I like to mix it with that... Coke as well, like okay. Diet Coke. Um, I th it's I it's almost kind of like a, a liqueur or a bourbon. Yeah, I didn't think it was a whiskey. I thought it was like a uh, like a mixer sort of drink, Southern Comfort. So it's it's, it's not it's not cool. You know what? I'm gonna have T to look. T I L. But this is this is my drink of choice. I drank a lot of it last night celebrating the promotion. So I'm on. I'm coffee. Yeah. Today. Congratulations, by the way. Congratulations, Brad. Thank you. So yeah. are you senior, senior now? Because I think when we initially spoke, you said you were a senior. Uh, uh, was it a lead or a? Yeah, like job titles are whatever. I think I was a software yeah. <laughs> engineer, and and now I'm a okay. senior software engineer. But I kind of just define myself as a lead front end engineer cool 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 have you got a large team um i previously worked with uh two guys and now i'm working with one so we're we're working in a larger team where the, there's a back end team and a, a ux team and a front end team and it's me and this one guy cool. building out some ui right now okay so this is this is the stuff here which was what uh what I got introduced to, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. So it's a Nika, Nika whiskey. It's a Japanese whiskey uh, from the barrel. And it's, it's really good. strong. And it, it tastes really nice. And as you can see by the amount of whiskey that's left in there. But um, that's what uh, Mark saw. Where are you? On oh, it's <laughs> right. yeah. oh, there we go. That's that's a cute little bottle. Love it. It is a very <laughs> cute little bottle. Yeah, it, honey, I've got big hands, so <laughs> and Ruth, it's a bottle. <laughs> it's uh, fifty cl. I'm not sure how big that is. I do like Ruth, milliliters. Uh, whiskey and water hold the whiskey, right? You, you've got <laughs> no. Uh, this is the thing. Um, I quite enjoy it with ice now, so. Um, we had this whole discussion, like the, the, the first or second meeting we had. Uh, it's totally a preference thing. But um, after talking with um, with the guys about it, um, I decided to try it with, with ice. And I think it's a lot more uh, say palatable. It's more enjoyable. And it lasts longer. 
and you don't get as intoxicated (laughs) you don't drink as much of it (laughs) but yeah that that whiskey is pretty good i had it a while ago and it like um when i got into drinking whiskey my girlfriend gave me this uh like uh tasting collection thing it was like it was 10 of these vials of different whiskeys where i got to try some of those and most of them were great except jack and jack daniels that was awful (laughs) um but uh yeah that that, uh nika from the barrel that wasn't she she doesn't like whiskey but that was the first one that she actually liked so yeah yeah so uh ruth ruth um do you do you drink do you have uh like a a a, a preferred tipple you have or um you don't have to yeah. share it's fine um i think um creamy liquor i prefer those ones because they are sweet <laughs> like mm. baby yeah so i think you'd like uh what brad's drinking there because that's that's quite sweet isn't it brad uh stuff and comfort oh yeah. If, yeah. if it's sweet i'll take it <laughs> as long as it's sweet Okay, so okay, cool. So, uh, guys... should we stop talking about whiskey and start talking about uh, yes, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> what, what I your... have an interesting topic in mind. Um, or, or, okay. do you have something, Scott? Well, I was about to say, like, uh, what's your, your biggest challenge been? Like, the uh, I mean, like, one, like, like personal growth, but also, uh, actually, something which you've, you've always come up against, and you, you, you know once you've sort of got past that one point then it's like this is this is awesome sort of thing um so biggest biggest challenges for me is just it it's just remembering stuff so this is why i've always gone for 100 days of codes because it, it just reinforced it every day but um it's, it's different for different people so i'd like to understand you know um how it was for you uh ruth or martha how did uh uh, you know, especially for you, Martha, I think we've been at home, homeschooling, um, you know, and you, you've just released an app. So that's awesome. So I'd like to understand how you sort of worked through that and, uh, you know, any challenges you come up against doing that. Right. Um, so, I mean, learning with kids at home uh, is challenging. Everyone's experiencing that nowadays, right? Because all the yeah. kids are at home and all the workers are home. So everyone's getting a taste. Um, but for me, uh, <laughs> you know, it was very surprising to me that before I started teaching myself low development, I'd always make a point to go out places with the kids, like to the library, to playgrounds, to play. They're they're pretty young, um, ages seven and under. And uh, I always thought I was doing it for them, but turns out I was doing it for me. Like, (laughs) I just wanted to get out. Just get out of the house, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then as soon as I started studying web development, turns out the kids were just fine all day long at home. It was just like, (laughs) oh. Okay, yeah, so it was yeah. just me and then. Uh, <laughs> um, and also just, uh, it, it helped. Um, I was actually getting more social interaction. I, I have a lot more in common with other developers than I do with other moms, it turns out. Uh, like when I would talk to other moms at the playground or wherever it was, I was like, this is, we're not really talking about anything I'm interested in. I need to talk to some geeks or nerds here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Star Wars or something. Come on. <laughs> um, so that's actually been really nice. Uh, getting into the development world is finding more uh, kindred spirits in that sense. People talking about things I'm actually interested in. Yeah, find, finding your tribe. Yeah, that's that's absolutely. Really yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah. So that so actually learning with the kids around hasn't been as challenging as you might think. I kind of see them as a natural Pomodoro clock. If you know what that is, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you do fine for an hour and a half, and that's when I study, and then, ding, they start bothering me, and it's time for a twenty-minute break, you know. Um, <laughs> and then I do it over again throughout the day. So that hasn't been as hard. Right. I think the biggest challenge for me has just been self-doubt. And right. I mean, I mean, you can call it imposter syndrome or whatever it is. I think that's true for anyone, but self-doubt. In terms of should I really be doing this? Am I smart enough? Maybe I should just go back to being with the kids full time. 
uh, maybe I am just fooling myself or, you know, just there's so much doubt that comes up as you're doing it, even with all the encouragement. And that's why it's so important to have that encouragement and have others yeah. think with you because those thoughts are going to come up and it's killer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, think so I, think really, I, I still have that. Yeah. I still yeah. Have that <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, think what, uh, I, I think that's like one of the, the biggest problems that uh, developers face all around from just starting out to, to the junior. And I think this is a really um, interesting topic. If you, if you don't mind, I, I would want to show something to explain this. So I, I think this would make some things uh, easier for everyone that's watching. Uh, is it your book, just... Mark? You pl you're plugging your book? I am, <laughs> no. Oh. My, my book, you have to you have to buy it. It's like nine nine ninety nine. <laughs> no, um, let me share a screen. Hold on one second. Oh, sorry. I think we better share about the uh, the book as well after this, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Th that's the end note. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm ruining the reveal. Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Okay, I, I'm going to draw something, so I, I will Woo! have to... Art stream. Shake your yeah. hand. So, five, nine, two, seven. It's my bank code, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I rotate this? Yeah. Okay, so I think this will help some people i hope it helps come on okay so assume this <laughs> what are you laughing at scott assume what? this the knowledge of the entire universe right and um everything there is to know and assume this circle and knowledge then all the knowledge of an individual person so this means that everywhere where the knowledge of the individual person uh, um, limits on the other knowledge of the universe, so all the red uh, little stripes, those are all things. All those red things are things that we know that we don't know. So we know that it exists, but we don't know how it works. So let's assume we have someone who knows more than this first person. So it would be this. So they know more, but this also means that there's a lot more stuff that we are aware, that that person is aware of that they don't know. So a, a professor in university taught me this or showed us this, and it makes a lot of sense. Like if you learn more stuff, there's always more stuff you don't know. So if you are a developer and you feel like, oh man, I, I'm not good enough. There's all, there are all these many, there's these many things that I don't know about. Like maybe think about this graphic and just tell yourself, well, you already know so, so many things. So the reason why you're having those doubts are because you're probably already in some kind of advanced state of the matter. Because if we, you were not, you wouldn't be worried about the stuff you don't know. So this was always an explanation I found particularly helpful. That's, that's, that is helpful. I mean, and that's why I think something that struck me from the beginning is how, uh, how humble most developers seem to be. Uh, <laughs> and it's probably because of that, that, uh, that they're aware of how much they don't know, even though no matter how advanced they are, they know there's so much more out there. Um, so that was, that was really neat. Not all developers, I must say, but some, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> most. Yeah. yeah. This is it's why also, 
ignorance is bliss. Claim to know nothing, and you won't run into that problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's um, it's it's interesting because this is um similar to a concept that I've read in like uh, one of Cal Newport's book. I believe it was Deep Work or So Good They Can Ignore You. I read both of those books. I'm not sure which one it was. Yeah, they're good books. They're good books. Deep Work is a pretty good book. Definitely recommend them. But uh, he mentioned something in science uh, that is like the adjacent possible. So it basically means like uh, you have this, like uh, the edge of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they keep expanding it. And that uh, when they get, when someone gets to the edge, like uh, they learn all the stuff that there is in their field. They see some things that might be possible. So they go and research, research them, right? So that's why it's called the adjacent possible because um, whenever you learn more stuff, you start seeing some things that you're like, yeah. you know, might be possible. They might not be, but you, you are probably going to learn if, if it is or not. And um, that is how you grow. I, I guess this is why code is never done. Yeah. This is why, <laughs> you know, it's, it's never, it's never done. It's uh, never done. It's, abandoned, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, I think that's, that lends to that. Um, what I wanted to say was earlier um, uh, about the imposter syndrome thing and um, how good, uh, you know, and supportive the, the Twitter community is. Um, I think Ruth tweeted it um this morning maybe um just about encouraging other people as well so it's you know we've already spoke it's like a big deal to share what you've done it's just, you know you're exposing yourself to the world here and um it, it's always important to sort of encourage those people as well on you know what they've done because so everyone needs that as well and i think this goes back to what martha was saying about how isolating it can be sometimes um and and the last thing you need is just to sort of bear your soul to the world and not have anything in return so um i, I, I do think that's uh you know um why the sort of web dev twitter is so so good in that respect as well so i always try to make sure if i see something which i know someone is you know it's like a first iteration or something I'm always very keen to to take a look um, and uh, not to give any criticism because I, I'm sure they would find enough things to to like we said about nothing's ever done. So I'm guessing that they would always find something to to iterate on and improve themselves. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all um, I want to say. <laughs> just uh, like give yeah. a, a talk a bit about more about that. Uh, I uh, earlier last week I uh, helped a friend who is just starting to like learn how to code, right? And he's uh, he's building this small project for uh, his uh, school, and he was like uh, confused about a couple things, and. Um, he asked me for help, so we we did a video call like this one, and uh, you know we shared screens and stuff like that. And I showed him how to do a couple things, but I didn't want to like take it too far, you know, because uh, I didn't want to like uh, take his code and then transform it into something that was completely different. Different until there was like no, no so it's your code, code that was his. Yeah, right, right exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, some things that uh, I don't usually do anymore is like a uh, simple example, but like for loops, I usually use like uh, the array methods like map for each, reduce, whatever, you know, but he was still using for loops. So uh, that was some good practice for me with for loops because I haven't used those in a while. Uh, like so it's simple so it's stuff good, like it's that. It's a good learning you know? experience as well, isn't it, for you, Eddie? Yeah, so. it's, it's very humbling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to get questions about stuff that you don't even think about anymore it's 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 kind of weird and then you have to like yeah go back in your brain and like oh, how does how did this work anymore it's it's all based on <laughs> mental models at yeah. this point <laughs> yeah so that's the thing as well it's about unlearning so you're always at this certain level where you know uh 
I mean, when you went back earlier, but it had to sort of define what MVP was. A lot of us just have that as something which, we, you know, is just a thing which we hear so so often that we don't really think we should need to explain it. But there's a lot of things when sort of I first started out with um, CSS, globally styling things, uh, specificity and stuff like that, which isn't really covered that well with um, a lot of like online tutorials and resources like that. So learning that sort of stuff, I was like, oh, and I, I, I sort of, I've always felt that um, there wasn't a great deal of it around. So that was a great, you know, a great opportunity for me to sort of write stuff up and say, look, this is how I do it. This is how I've learned other people, you know, from other people doing it as well. But, I, you know, I don't really think that's talked about enough as well. So this is the thing where, you sort of get this acquired knowledge and then you sort of build on that. But then it's when you sort of have to go back a couple of steps, it's like, oh, what, you know, how do, how do computers work again? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so um, this is what uh, Brad was saying earlier, but he started from the very basics, like how does a browser work? Yeah. Um, Wrapping yeah. my head around that was very difficult at the beginning. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. the way I, the way I had to out, figure right? that out. I don't mean Sorry. it in a sort of confrontational way, but do you need no, no. it now? Exactly. So it's do, oh, um, do I need, yeah. Uh, yeah like, so I, I don't mean it in a confrontational way, but I just like it's it's good to know, but it's something which you shouldn't have to sort of, you know. I, I don't think if someone comes along and say, "Well, do you know how sort of HTTP works?" Um, and they're like, "Well, I'm here just to style something. Why do I need to know that?" You know what I mean? So there's. Um, there's different sort of layers to things like that as well. So, um, yeah. I'd like to know how mean, Brad. How I'd like to know how Brad figured out how a browser works. Yeah, it was <laughs> the, the web platform in general, right? Because I was used to writing server side languages where, you know, like C or Java or Python, where like you have threads or whatnot. But the fact that that there were requests being made from your browser out to somewhere else, I did not understand what it meant to like uh, source a script tag or source a style sheet when those were being made. Um, and the way I had to, what I had to do to figure that out was I I used Node.js and wrote my own like very simple web server. And then I started understanding what happened on the back end when requests were coming in. And so by reverse engineering that and starting from the bottom up, like I didn't even use libraries like Express or anything. It made me understand what's actually going on, like what's happening from the browser and how the web uh, web server is responding and handing back proper, whether it be straight up files or server side rendered HTML. So reverse engineering wow, things that's... It helps. Yeah, but reverse engineering the browser, like wow. That's, that's super <laughs> impressive. <laughs> it really is. Uh, but I mean, this is another thing where you sort of talk about the level where you're at and you understand stuff lower down. And like with C, that is like super low level. So you yeah. understand, you know, a lot of that stuff, I guess, already. So I think that would be a natural progression for you. But for someone who is just like um, just starting out, you just you just understand it as like a, a, like a window where you put something in stuff happens. So yeah. um, I think when I first started out, I, I sort of tried to understand uh, HTTP words and um, networking and things like that. But, um, you know, you, you do know to understand like requests and like the networking tab in your browser, but actually, you know, what happens to it after it leaves your browser, you know, what the journey yeah. is between that and the server, uh, like the, the back end, it's, it's not, it's inconsequential, I think, really. And well, uh, I find that's a bit tough when you get challenged on that for, um, you know, like I saw for, for coding interviews and things like that. I don't really think that's a, a very fair thing to, to, to be asking. And, and again, it probably comes from this thing where they're at a certain level and they think that sort of thing should be implicit knowledge, but it's not. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that was like half the battle, right? Like that was the back end portion. I had to do something similar for the front end as well, because the jump from static HTML files to something like a framework for rendering elements like React, I did not understand how React worked or what it was doing. And 
that was something else I kind of had <laughs> right. to reverse engineer to to realize, oh, this is just making like holding state or variables and writing elements to the DOM a lot easier for me. Uh, and I had to kind of almost start, you know, running into the same problems and kind of inventing my own framework before you realize, oh, this is what React does. This is why it's valuable. So anytime you can reverse engineer something where you're not you're not really understanding its purpose helps you to like bring that level of knowledge back to what you currently know. It also helps if you just, you know, uh, even even if you're not going to reverse engineer it, right? If you're just going to, uh, since you mentioned React, if you're just going to build like a web application with JavaScript, right? So mm -hmm. you're, you're going to go ahead and like, you have to figure out a way like how, oh, how am I going to manage states? Uh, how does like creating an element to a list uh, and adding it to a list work? And oh, wait, but now I want to add it to the front of the list. How does that work? You know, and th things like that. And you just run into these problems and that that that's like also a great way to learn, but it's also a good way of realizing like, oh, th this is why we have these abstractions, right? Yeah. And and that was that was where I struggled is I didn't understand, you know, okay, let me learn web development and you grab React on day one and you go, wait, I don't understand all of this. You have to hit the problems before you reach for the libraries. Yeah. What, what I find what I always tell people that are asking me on Twitter when they are like, Do you do I really need to learn the basics of JavaScript before I jump into a framework? My answer is always this is opinionated. Yes. It could be people that are not learning like this, but I always say you need to learn the basics before you jump into any frameworks. There are not that many people that can do it without. There are like people that say, oh yeah, but I can do it without learning JavaScript before. And I think it, that it's a, it's a recipe for disaster, if you ask me. This is, this is my personal opinion, but if you just go ahead and try to learn react without knowing like not everything not not like the whole extent of javascript but the basics if you, if you master the basics you, you're golden but without knowing that you can't learn or you can learn it but then you will have a hard time yeah, yeah. you don't know what's react and you don't know what's plain javascript and i think that's yeah that's a very bad place to be in it's, I would say... it's an interesting discussion because, uh, like, some people they learn the framework first uh, in the front end, you know, and then uh, everything worked fine for them. And for some people, that's like hell, right? So uh, after like uh, my first six months of coding, like not even just web development, like I was doing a bunch of things uh, in my first year of uh, school. Uh, I'm in college, and um, then I tried uh, this Angular course on Udemy, right? So I was doing, I went from like, uh, all right, I, I did a couple things with C Sharp, and I did a bit of PHP, some basic JavaScript. All right, let's 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 jump into Angular, right? So I'm, I'm not even writing JavaScript anymore. I'm doing TypeScript now, baby. It's <laughs> like, and I, I got like, I spent like a week or two on that course and I was like, all right, this is too much. This is like, I, I don't even know what is happening. What is going on? What am I doing? What is this framework doing? And what is the browser doing? I need to step back and just go on free code cam, practice, practice some coding and like go back to the fundamentals. But it's different for every person. And uh, of course, and it's also, different for uh, various uh, abstractions because like when I started JavaScript, I didn't know how a browser worked, but I, I still made some stuff, you know, and, but yeah. it's, it, I think that's a whole different thing than jumping straight into something like Angular or another framework and having it do most of the stuff for you. I will say, I mean, based on my experience, I would say one of, one of the things that I regret is rushing you know i mean if i were to do it all over again i mean i was in the mentality i gotta learn this stuff stuff as fast as possible build some projects and then get a job <laughs> like <laughs> so fast. 
<laughs> um, and now in retrospect, after applying for some jobs and building some projects and realizing, wow, there's a lot of things that I could have played around with more, understood more deeply, even HTML and CSS. Like I just rushed through those so, so I could get to JavaScript, you know? Um, but there's a lot to learn just in HTML and CSS. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that would be my advice to anyone is not to rush, not to be like, okay, what's the bare minimum I need to know so I can start applying for jobs. It's just like, it's going to come out. It's going to come out in the interviews. It's going to come out when you start your job that you did not take your time and actually learn this stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's just something I've thought about. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I have an interesting story about that. Like, um, when I started learning all those, uh, web development or more modern web development stuff like I was like okay I'm going to quit my job so I can uh, learn all these cool new things right so I was like oh yeah I'm going to learn Vue.js and I'm going to learn React and I'm going to learn TypeScript I'm going to learn Node.js I'm going to learn MongoDB I'm going to learn Express I'm going to learn <coughs> SAS I'm going to learn less <laughs> For whatever reason and then oh i'm going to learn uh how is it called the uh, machine learning uh thing that tensorflow tensorflow i'm going to learn tensorflow and yeah and i i said myself oh yeah i have three months i do all of that and <laughs> you know what like a week per technology right and that yeah should... <laughs> we, yeah it should, it should do it this is no big deal but oh man it yeah i'm like one year later and I have not even half of my roadmap done. Like this is, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I think I learned a lot in this year. I, I made a big <laughs> project for a big client. I, I, I gained like a lot of money with what I learned, but I still learned like, I still learned like this little in the time that I thought I would learn. So it's always, yeah, you, you cannot learn for a framework in two two weeks or even a month you need to learn it and then you need to practice it and then you need to practice some more and then when you're done practicing you practice some more and then you're getting there yeah i had an experience to... yesterday yeah so um i wanted to like um create a website i just did basic html and css so I, I don't have any knowledge about javascript so um someone told me about gatsby that i could just um there was everything in place for you to just do what you want and i checked the github repo and i thought it was looking so it was looking so simple like i was going to do it when i checked the github repo i i wanted to fuck it but I said, okay, let me just go through the guidelines of making the simple website. And I was seeing a whole lot of JavaScript there. I was so confused. So it's actually good to learn the basics because I was thinking the framework was just going to help me. It was just going to do everything for me and I'll just transfer everything. But I was still confused. So understanding the basics is really key. No matter how, how good you are with learning the hard one before the simple one but understanding those little little steps are very very good yeah if you're looking to make like kind of the next step um on just html and css knowledge there's a tool called 11d that'll help you kind of template out what a page looks like and then just change the content inside of it so it doesn't get all super javascripty like gatsby but it's a great extension of how do I build more? How do I become slightly more advanced with okay. the, the basic HTML and CSS that I know? Is it is it like Jekyll um, 11C bread? Is it? Yeah. Does it use liquid tags, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it uses like um, HTML templating and spits out a static website at the end of the day. Sorry, uh, but what, Jekyll, what Jekyll's Ruby-based. Yeah, I posted the link in the um, chat on YouTube. Oh, okay. Eleventy. Do you want to uh, post it in the private chat here, Brad? And I'll share it via the uh, by the Whiskey yeah, Wednesday account, so you can have the link. Because mm -hmm. sometimes 
we had this discussion earlier it's a bit weird with links when you share them in youtube chat yeah i'll put it here in the stream 11 all oh, right yeah oh. 11 t yeah okay cool it's a great next step where Gatsby might, <laughs> there's a lot of things involved in Gatsby. Yeah, FQL, exactly. JavaScript. Uh, 11 is a good, you know, level up your skills without breaking your brain. <laughs> I played GraphQL. That was so, like, I spent a uh, while learning about GraphQL lately. Mm -hmm. And not, like, uh, consuming GraphQL is not that hard, but once you're, like, writing the server side part of it it's just yeah. what do i do what am i how am i supposed yeah. to do this and it's just get some data yeah. like uh... yeah scott was talking <laughs> yeah. about unlearning what you know and i feel like the transition from rest to graphql is exactly that um it's a giant like hold on how how do http <laughs> requests work and why are we changing everything and you realize why graphql is better in some ways and then worse and some others by the time you're done learning it. Yeah. We had a, uh, an application at work, which uh, I, I had free reign on. So I was like, oh, this year is all, all the new stuff. And um, uh, we had to write a, it was a really simple app, but we, we uh, it's just because we got the opportunity to use new technology that we decided to write a GraphQL server with uh, Next.js and, um, we're using Prisma, and at the time it seemed like all cool and new and exciting. And then, after we had to um, maintain it after a while, everyone just hated it. And me, they're like, Scott, this is just <laughs> why are you doing this to us? This is like <laughs> such a it, you know, not the right situation to use this. So, um, uh, I've recently gone through um, a bit of um uh like a like a, a white paper proposal on just re-architecturing it and just like keeping it si as simple as possible um with it and um we have um we've moved away from this whole you know graphql back end because it's absolutely not needed um so it's a good learning experience for me in um uh sorry <laughs> it's a good learning experience for me on you know you don't always have to use the latest and greatest technology to to make yeah. something and just having you know something which is simple and just does a job effectively is 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 a lot better so um uh yeah lessons learned from that but um i do like graphql and um i do like um <laughs> Um, and, and I do like uh, using GraphQL in Gatsby, um, but um, uh, th there's there's a bit of a difference between uh, using GraphQL in Gatsby and like using GraphQL in in another situation, like write, writing your own backend and uh, you know creating your own resolvers and like, subscriptions and stuff like that is a yeah. a lot more complicated than just writing a like a, a bit of JSON for. Uh, your Gatsby page. So yeah. there's, uh, again, there's, there's different levels to it. And uh, um, uh, I think what, what Brave was saying is, is like for uh, jumping from HTML and CSS to 11 T, that would be easy. And I think that's why I think Vue is um, uh, it's also very popular because it's very uh, oh, yeah. HTML and CSS like because um, you're doing a lot of stuff in in the um uh in, in in the markup uh whereas with gatsby all that sort of stuff is abstracted away from you to doing components but yeah um, or svelte is a great kind of intro framework uh, very html i still got to use Svelte. natural i've still got to have a play about with it yeah i yeah. still need to, to to have a play with svelte not used it you mark it's used it incredible it's it's really oh. good it might use be what <laughs> Have you spelt spelt? Spelt? Mm, no, <laughs> but I heard good things about it. Yeah, yeah. I have used it. It's it's really good. Uh, the only thing about it is like if you um, want to do something like GraphQL, for example, there's like not a lot of packages that you can choose from. So mm -hmm. um, 
you might have to do more of like the work that you would sometimes like uh, have libraries do for you in something like mm -hmm. React. You might have to write that yourself. Uh, but like Svelte itself is really great, especially like um, I, I do React at my job and uh, like animation in React is like pretty hard, right? I, I, I mean, if you've ever try to do it you you know what i'm talking about in svelte it's like it, it's easy it's like uh it's all um, built in isn't it i understand yeah, yeah. it's 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 felt the like the files if you uh use like uh their um uh, compiler uh, uh setup it's pretty similar to view you have like your html your script and your uh css in the same file but like animation it's like Oh, uh, just add this property. Like, uh, I, I'm not sure what it was again, but it's like something like uh, fade in uh, and just add it on that property. And like, you can give it some options, like uh, the duration and such. And when it appears, it just fades in and stuff like that. And but it also fades out. And like the exit transitions are incredibly hard in React, and it's in Svelte it's just peanuts. It's it's pretty great. Anyway, uh, Svelte is cool. Check it out if you want to. <laughs> should we talk? Should we talk a little bit about learning resources? Like since we're talking about like teaching ourselves yep. web development, like there's so many different resources out there. Um, I know Ruth mentioned a few when we first started, uh, and uh, you, but you've been learning Python mostly, right? So, what are some good resources for learning Python that you found? Okay, um, I said ProGate. ProGate is very beginner friendly. ProGate. So it was about slides. They use slides to teach. So if you're the kind that doesn't like watching so many videos and reading so many texts. They use slides to teach. So if you're that kind of person, ProGate is very friendly for you. And there are a whole lot of animes around it. So the slides look very interactive. Then and I'd also recommend Free Code Camp. Very great place to yeah. get started with web development. Like that's where I started when I want to jump around some HTML and CSS. Then uh, JetBrains too is there. JetBrains, the, the good thing with JetBrains, I'm currently using JetBrains now. The good thing with them is um, they give you hands-on projects to build as you learn. So um, there's you, the current game I'm trying to make now is a zookeeper's game. So as you learn, they give you a project to practice alongside so you can tweak it up later on. So those three places are where the best resources I started with. Great. Yeah, I did. I did free code camp too a lot. It's nice to have that curriculum and the projects at the end of each certification. It's really nice. Um, yeah. Did a little code academy too. Some of their courses are free. Others are, uh, you know, you pay for a membership. Um, but I recently have been hearing hearing about the Odin project. I I put a link to it in the comments. But I was looking through it the other day, and it has a lot of the things that I thought free code camp was missing out on like they don't um teach you how to set up your ide or work with git and github and those are the things i just learned from other developers and they weren't part mm. of the curriculum but the um, project has them in there and they also have free code camp in there like it's just kind of a mishmash of lots of different resources online and they're all just kind of put together in a curriculum and they have different projects that you can build so that's one of those things I've heard other people say great things about it. I'm kind of wishing that I had found that earlier on myself, uh, <laughs> you know, past tense. But uh, it's, um, it's, it's the only project uh, based around Ruby. Um, I think they do. Based Ruby. off of that. Right. So, yeah. I think there's a web develop. I think that's part of the web development um, course. So, so I, I think I think I looked at that early on. Uh, when I was sort of start, um, first started getting skilled up, and um, it seemed pretty well. It, it was just it was just Ruby, and like as soon as I started reading the curriculum, I was like, ah, um, you know, I, I, I needed um, 
not to be that specific. So I was just looking at more JavaScript stuff. Um, so I didn't actually get that far into it. So I'm guessing that um, the resources for, um, you know, setting up your IDE and Git and things like that are really handy to have. Um, right. And um, I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing with uh, Free Code Camp, that's just sort of, uh, like what I was saying earlier about just it, it being like assumed that you, you know that sort of stuff. Right. Um, I think that was kind of my feeling with Free Code Camp is that a lot, as reading some of the explanations for different uh, exercises, it sounded like they were talking more to people with a little more experience almost, um, which is why it was nice starting with the free courses in Code Academy was because the explanations were a little more intuitive to me and they had the little console right there. You could see the effects of what you were doing. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of use those in conjunction with one another. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where there's no perfect platform, there's no perfect resource, and you can waste a lot of time jumping around trying to find it, which is what I did. Um, <laughs> so I just decided to stick with Free Code Camp um, as, a, as a guide, basically, but also accepting mm -hmm. that it was up to me to make sure I understand it and go to outside resources if I needed yeah. to. Um, which is what you do as a developer. You find the resources you need to understand what you need to understand. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well said. Yeah, very well said. Okay, so uh, how are we doing for time, Mark? Is it within an hour and a half? Hour and a half. We can keep going a little bit more if you guys are up to it. I have a bit more time. <laughs> Same here. I'm good. Yeah. Sounds like a yes. I, I like the way Martha looked at Brad. I'm just looking at my screen. <laughs> like, but Martha looked at Brad to see if it was okay. Brad is <laughs> a super <laughs> whiskey. It's <laughs> for a little longer. <laughs> I'll be yeah, for me, I, I used uh, YouTube videos because I my goal was like to do this without purchasing anything. I used YouTube videos. Um, one great channel, two great channels actually is Traversy Media and the Net Ninja. They're yeah. a great JavaScript yeah. focused channel. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so that got me off the ground with basics and even a little bit of framework stuff. Um, and then another guy named Academind uh, helped me with a lot of the framework stuff. When I finally decided to spend any money, it was um, Scott Talinsky for sure. I like his very short courses, short focus courses as opposed to like the West Boss style where they're like very, very long and in depth. I found that those were a lot harder to get through for me. Yeah, I can attest to that. Longer courses are sometimes pretty hard to get through. Uh, another like premium resource that I would recommend is front end masters if you want to do front end. Like uh, I uh, use them a lot uh, during also during my uh, college degree, um, it's like if, if your student is like 50% off, uh, it's not too cheap. It's still like $20 a month e even then, but it's like so worth it. It's, uh, but like uh, Brad said, you can definitely do everything for like zero money, except for maybe a computer and an internet connection. You can do everything for free. So don't, don't feel pressured if you're watching this uh, to go yeah. buy any of these things. There's yeah. so much great free content out there. Like like he mentioned, the Net Ninja. I was watching the Net Ninja like last week about like Passport JS because I'm getting more into backend development. So I want to do authentication and stuff like that. So I was watching mm -hmm. a few tutorials of his to get into it because I'm visually or oriented person. So I yeah, like videos. Cool. So yeah, there you go. Free stuff. Yeah. So uh, an, another good resource who have got um, a great amount of community resources um, would be Eggerhead.io. It is a it's a paid subscription service, but there is um, uh, community um, uh, content as well. And you can search for it on it. Just search for free community content. And there's a lot of stuff, which is, there's like a Kent C. Dodds, um, getting started with React course. There's um, 
uh, one which I really liked, which was uh, Chris Biscardi and uh, Gatsby and MDX. Um, so it's just some really good content on there. So that is another one I'd, I'd recommend as well. With It's got a lot of free content on there um, with really good, short, sort of concise instructional videos. So I would recommend that. Okay. Yeah, well, I learned almost everything I I learned in the, in this uh, in this past year with the Udemy courses. I kind of like the format of these extensive courses because the teachers all, always go into uh, details that maybe later you you find uh, useful. Uh, maybe it's an overkill, but this is something that worked for me. My favorite teacher is uh, Andrew Mead. He has an amazing Node.js, an amazing Node.js uh, course, and um, also React. I have the React course in my, still in my, uh, in my not seen yet courses. But uh, I will get to it one day or another if I have vacation one day, maybe. I have like over ten courses on Udemy that I purchased but haven't touched. So yeah, there, there was yeah. in, in December or January, there were like so, like a big sale on, on everything. And I also bought a bunch. There's, a, there's always a sale on you to me. There's always a sale on you to me. <laughs> yeah. And it's always, it's always 10 pounds a course. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. If, if you're on Udemy, the, the one course that I would definitely recommend, uh, it's like half of it is even for free on YouTube, so you can check it out if you want to without paying a penny for it. Is uh, like it's called JavaScript understanding the weird parts. And like that one was so good. It's like um, it's it, it's not very more modern anymore, so it doesn't like uh, include let and const. I think, but it's like really good for like breaking down javascript and like uh how it works line by line and things like that so that one is that one is an academind course as well right with max um, and schwarzmiller no it's it's by uh let me check uh, it's by tony alicia it's from 2015 or something like that so okay Okay. Yeah, I, th I, I thought I had the book on it, um, but it was eloquent JavaScript, which is also highly recommend all, that one. It's free. Yeah, also, yeah, but it's also um, it's a Carl Simpson's course. You don't know JavaScript? Yeah. Um, they're all free online. Uh, I have to link the, uh, the the GitHub repo for that, Mark. Yeah, I'll get I'll get the link mm -hmm. and uh, share it. Um, but that is a very good overview of um oh yeah i have JavaScript. It you got it of of getify right yes getify yeah yeah getify. how about whether to learn start out by learning html css or whether to start out learning javascript i mean Dep depending what, the, what you want to do html and css the holy trinity yeah <laughs> I think we said this. Uh, I think we said this the week before or, or last time. Um, depends on where you want to focus your energy, I guess, because um, you you could do JavaScript without needing to know HTML and CSS, like in Node. In the back and end. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you could get a, you could get fully involved with um, just learning things like SVG. And mm -hmm. just just manipulating those sort of things because that's the whole industry in itself. Yeah, working with uh, SVG. So was, JavaScript is what got me interested in programming. You know, I I started out with JavaScript and I just loved the logic and the I, I, I just loved it. And then, but all these different courses were like, well, go through HTML, CSS. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And I just found it really boring. <laughs> I have to get back to the logic, you know. Um, and and so it's like if we recommend people start with HTML CSS, they might just be bored and say programming's not for me, you know? Um, yeah. So um, <laughs> I definitely what agree. You want to build? Yeah. Right. If you're if you're going to be a front end developer, if you're going to be a web developer, I think it is mandatory to learn 
all three HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But I would say starting with HTML, then moving to CSS, then moving to JavaScript. Um, yeah. If you want to be a backend type developer, you have your pick of languages to learn, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, and you get to focus on that logic, on that programming piece. Whereas, you know, front end development might seem a little bit more like design. And it kind of is in, in a lot of regards. It feels yeah. more like programming when you start using, leveraging, heavily leveraging JavaScript uh, to produce your HTML and CSS. I yeah. agree. Uh, just uh expand on that a little bit like uh the reason why a lot of people uh recommend html and css first is uh because uh a lot of like beginners when they learn javascript first which is totally fine i'll talk about that a little bit later but uh when they learn javascript first they start doing these things with javascript that you can do with just html or you can do them with just CSS, like something like a, a simple animation or like um, maybe like there was this one time where I, I, I at a previous job, I had to make like uh, a comp like a small like menu that popped up, uh, popped out. And I could do that with like just some native HTML and CSS, right? So no JavaScript involved, but like if you're uh, like, React, uh, I mean, like something like React first or JavaScript first, you might not even use CSS to do that. You just have to, like, well, of course, for the styling, or else it's going to look like garbage. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but the, the thing about like learning JavaScript first, it, it's honestly fine if that keeps you engaged with programming because that's where I think a lot of people maybe go wrong it's like when they force themselves to do some things like first because like if you really want to do like for example uh 3d stuff on the web and you uh really want to do 3js but like somebody tells you like no you shouldn't jump into libraries right now you have to like do uh these uh small applications you have to write your to do you have to, uh, you have to write a notes application you have to write this and that first in native javascript and then and only then you can go to like libraries like 3js no, no if that's what you want to yeah. do just do it, go yeah. and do it because it makes you happy right and if you're if the, the stuff that you're building makes you sad then you're not going to build it. Like, trust me, if, if it's, if, if you're on a, like a Friday afternoon or a Saturday, the weekend, whatever. And, uh, you, and you look at like the stuff that you want to build and you see something that excites you, you're a hundred times more likely to jump in. Yeah. Whereas if you like are seeing this, um, uh, list of tasks that you made for yourself like oh i gotta learn about while wow loops today that doesn't sound fun uh maybe maybe next week you know i'm gonna chill for the weekend uh, we'll see then this no. reminds me of <laughs> jason langsdorf's um like idea of when to learn things he says just in time learning so find yeah, a thing you want to yeah. build and learn exactly what it takes to build that thing because you're excited yeah. about learning that and and you'll you'll get there could you do it better probably but like that's later as you get more under your belt you'll look back and see oh i can fill in those gaps but learn just as much as you need to build what you want to build just yeah, in otherwise I'm, I'm a, yeah I'm a, I'm a massive believer in that um and uh, I think I heard it from uh, Wes Boz and uh, Scott Talinsky, first of all. But it is, I mean, I've, I've always done that before that anyway. Is um, Otherwise, that sort of stuff you're learning, those basics, those, you know, uh, I've spent six weeks learning HTML and CSS. If you're not using them all the time, day in, day out, you're going to forget parts of it. And... Um, you know, you're going to have to learn it again when you need it. So uh, oftentimes you get people say, well, should I learn? I mean, I, I was like, should I learn jQuery? And I, I haven't worked with jQuery yet. Thank God. Um, 
but there, there are a lot of projects out there. And um, just think uh, if when I was sort of um, building up to sort of starting out as a, you know, like a, a professional, someone who's employed to do web development. Um, and I, in, in that time, my sort of ramping up to that, I spent six weeks learning jQuery and I've not, not been asked to look at it ever since then. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, two years in, someone goes, ah, oh, can you do this in jQuery? I'm not going to remember that stuff from, <laughs> from two years ago. I'm not going to remember any of it. So, you know, you just you go to Google, you go, right, okay, how do you hide an element in jQuery? And there you go, bang, you, you know how to do it. So uh, I think this comes to what, what uh, Martha was saying earlier. It's about how much time you invest in certain parts to do. And I'm not trying to be like, gatekeepery about it but it's on uh, i think this is going back to what eddie was saying as well is just what you feel that you should be doing at that time is what you should be learning rather than you know there shouldn't be i mean there could be a specific route where you learn the basics but um it, it's just what you need to know at that time to do that thing which is you know it's just the the sort of personification of just in time learning um it is just your hey ruth it's just your um your 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 ability to uh pick up that stuff and either relearn it or you know or, or learn it at that time so yeah it's a good point yeah and advice it's great to get advice from experienced people but that doesn't mean you have to follow it <laughs> it's just like it's very helpful to yeah. have a curriculum too but that doesn't mean you have to follow it. So, so like I, I use Free Code Camp as kind of a curriculum, but I branched out here and there and everywhere while yeah. I was following it, and I didn't have to stick with it. Like I didn't finish the entire web development curriculum because it had served its purpose, basically. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, you do other things, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's also important um, if you're learning, even if you're learning, you have something you can apport to the community. So there are many people that think, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just starting off. I can't contribute to anything. But um, Absolutely, the, yeah. the, the truth is, uh, even as a, as a beginner, you can apport to someone just behind you on the learning curve. Like this, the learning curve is like a, like a Gaussian curve, right? And just behind you, doesn't matter where you are, just behind you, there's someone that can be uh, inspired by what, by what you do, or you can help them, even if you're not a senior or whatever lead developer. Like, nobody really cares. Like you, when you learn something, you can write a blog post about it. This not only helps uh, some other people, but also you. Like if you write down a blog post, it helps you understand things better, and you help all the all the people behind you in the learning curve which is a yeah, great thing absolutely oh my goodness yeah. <laughs> that brings up so i signed up this is before the pandemic hit but i signed up to give a talk at a meetup a full stack dev meetup about redux and wow and it's i wanted to give a technical talk you know it's so much easier to give like a soft skills soft skills talk for me at least like how to communicate with people or whatever um but I wanted to give a technical talk to challenge myself and to learn more, like you were describing. If you write a blog post, you learn so much more. And I learned yeah. so much about Redux <laughs> <laughs> preparing for that talk. And especially yeah. once I realized that most of my audience, they weren't even gonna be JavaScript developers. Like, so I would have to explain Redux in a way that any programmer in any language would understand what I was talking about and why it's important and what it does, et cetera. So that was an extra challenge on top of it, but yeah, learned a lot. Yeah, just great. a small like life hack, if you will, yeah. about giving your first meetup talk. My first meetup talk was about Svelte.js uh, version three, and it was like launched maybe a couple months before my talk, and I haven't. I had not ever used Svelte before that. And I just applied like, all right, I'm going to do a talk about Svelte. Yes. I, 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 I'm going to tell you all how it works. And then I just learned it in the meantime. And even though 
I was giving a talk to like all these uh, very experienced developers, right? Uh, they didn't know Svelte yet because they didn't like uh, spend any time on it yet. So they couldn't like in my mind at least it was like, all right, if they don't know it yet, they're not gonna be this smart ass, you know, in the in the crowd that's gonna be like, but actually it works like this <laughs> so i i was like e even though i was very new to like frameworks and stuff like that i was the expert in the room and <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of silly but like if you can talk about something that well i guess it comes down to know your audience like martha said she kn she knew that uh most of her audience wasn't going to be uh like javascript developers so she knew how to like prepare her talk and that's kind of similar to what i did so there you go if you want to do a meetup talk try to like make a good guess about who your audience is and base your talk on that yeah i um uh, i actually i uh, you know vue.js amsterdam yeah mm -hmm. eddie yeah. probably knows um, I volunteered for them once. Oh, cool. Uh, well, I uh, I registered to to do a talk for for them, and uh, like just last week they wrote me. Oh yeah, Mark, we want you to talk at Vue.js Global for us. And, <laughs> nice. and yeah, and the uh, the topic I chose is something that I'm not that familiar with. I, I'm comparing Vue. Vue.js version two versus version three reactivity, how it works in the inside. I know how it works in Vue.js two, and I know the concept how it works in in Vue three, but I don't know how it works exactly in Vue three. So this is something I have to learn in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. But the thing is, now you make me scared because you said, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, check who your audience is. I, I, I take an educated guess and I say my audience will be people that are like way better at this stuff than I am. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thanks, Eddie. <laughs> Getting more nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I, th I think the thing is as well is um, the best way to learn is to teach, isn't it, Mark? Um, yeah. So I think this is what Martha was saying earlier is that you want to make sure you know how to sort of explain the the basics, but also go through the you know what's happening as well. So that that's always you've always got. To, I think this goes back to what we were saying earlier about when you when you do your blog post, you're writing it for future self, so you write it down so you can refer to it at a later date. But you're also writing it for past self, which is like me when I wanted to know, you know, how to globally style something in CSS. That's um, you, you do it for those two reasons. So you do it for like your own reference, but it's also going to help someone who's at that same point. It's like, well, why can't I find how to do this anywhere? Um, so that's mainly why I sort of document stuff is because I have really found a great resource which explains it how. I would explain it. So, um, so it, you know, this always why it's a good idea to do that. Um, but just uh, to keep your own notes. If anything, you don't have to publish it to the world, but um, yeah. you know, Absolutely. just just have something which you can refer to. Yeah, I totally agree. Whenever I write anything on the internet, it's because it's like basically a note for me to refer to later, uh, especially yeah. like. The, the thing about it like being posting something on dev.2 or whatever like if if the notes that i wrote is on my personal laptop i can check it while i am at work right so it's it's yeah. basically all yeah. it's, it's all selfish but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh yeah. for yeah. everyone else who can use it of course but it's it's i'm mostly most of the time i'm just writing stuff for me because i think that mm. like I, I think I can add to the discussion or something like that. But uh, just saying, Mark, I don't want to make you more nervous for your talk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, just uh, like uh, calm your nerves a little bit. Um, 
most of the time that you know if, if you're doing a conference talk it's not all going to be experts it's mainly just be because it's pretty expensive bit, it's mostly bit. just going to be people whose bosses are willing to pay for them <laughs> to go there so yeah, they're not but, necessarily yeah. all experts <laughs> that, that, they're the, sat there looking the at twitter is, while you're talking the thing is the lineup those will be experts this evan is right. going to be there and other members of the core team so i'm one really excited to do it and second very frightened to do it at the same time so. i get that but like a... is, isn't view three like very new like is it even out yet i'm i'm more into uh, React, so. my last my last info is that it's coming at the uh, third quarter but right. yeah it, it's coming like they are in beta phase since february february or right. march yeah but yeah march and okay. um yeah they it, it will come in the next couple of months and but, when is um, your talk in august right so literally nobody like, has learned about it then so you, you're fine like you're yeah. an expert <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a, a lot of okay. times with the core team uh wants to get out of it is to not ever you know prove the speaker wrong but the core team is sitting there going okay this this is a guy who's you know picking up this new feature of view three for the first time and presenting his findings on it and what he thinks mm -hmm. did we as a core team portray that through our documentation through our code through our marketing material uh as we wanted it to be perceived and, and it's like aligning how the community is going to view this versus what the intention of the core team is. So you think of yourself as like a liaison for the view core team to spread their message. And that's what they're looking at. Not to ever say, you know, Mark is up there saying wrong things. They're saying, Ooh, we need to go fix something and change our messaging. If something was interpreted wrong, you're like the best beta user ever at that point. <laughs> and then I like that. <laughs> There's two things that you can offer besides just uh, um, information and teaching, right? One is your personal experience. That's something that no other speaker can share. Yep. Um, so your your experience with the previous view versus the new version or different things, like make it personal somehow is one thing. And the other thing is make it entertaining, you know? Yeah. Then if nobody learns anything, at least they had a few laughs, right? <laughs> I I went to this one meetup where someone was talking about Kubernetes. And to this day, I don't really know what Kubernetes is. But it was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. It was just one jerk after another that he, he hardly even said anything. He just went to the next slide, and everyone started laughing. And then he went to the next slide, and everyone started laughing. <laughs> That's that's interesting because like before the like quarantine started and stuff like that, I remember going to this meetup and there was this uh, person uh, doing a talk and he gave it like this Star Trek th theme. And, like I I'm listening here to like what you said and I'm thinking that was an awesome talk. You know, he made all these like, Klingon jokes. But I, to be honest, I don't even remember the topic. <laughs> That's hilarious. I make a whiskey themed uh, talk. So. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm looking forward to that, even though I don't use view, but it's going to be great. Sure. All right. No I better way. take off now, guys. This has been a okay. really. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to gonna close yeah, up here up now. yeah but uh, i have like one little thing i want to tell the viewers out there the, the beginners um i tell a little story so um when i finished uh university uh like it was three years of bachelor's two years of master's and then at the end there was like the ceremony right we all went we all dressed up and so on, all fancy and so on. And um, we were sitting there like, oh, yeah, we are the best. Like, we have a master's degree. Like, we are at the top of everything. And then there goes our, um, how is it called? The, the administrator um, person that gave a talk, like the, the uh, yeah, oh, the, the speaker, faculty. the commencement speaker. 
yeah, faculty um, administrator, speaker, whatever. She went up there and she gave a speech about like quotes with uh, with Steve Jobs and so on and everything. And at the end, she closed her remarks with this, and I will probably never forget it. Like, once you become a master in one thing, you have to become a student in another thing. I think this is something really valuable. If you become a master in one thing, you you it's time for you to become a student in another thing. I, I really like that quote and I think it would follow me until until the end of the earth. Like if you if you're the the best in something or if you're on the top of something, like it's time to choose something else to expand your knowledge. And I, I think that's that, that's like my favorite almost my favorite quote from all time. So I, I just wanted to share that because it, it goes with the topic. Totally agree. Always <laughs> learning and programming. Yeah. Always learning. Actually, learning and unlearning and relearning. And really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely relearning. And not yeah. just in developing in uh, everything, every aspect. Right. Well, life. thank you so much for hosting this and for having us yeah. on. It's been Thanks, so thanks for coming. Thank yeah, thank you for coming. Was great. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye guys. Bye. See you, Martha. See you, Brad. See you, Eddie. Bye, bye, yeah. bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 guys. Bye, Mark. bye, Mark. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Bye, 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 bye. 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 You want bye, another bye. intro as an extro? Okay. No. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Go. Go. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>